networking. It talks about on-campus placements. And out of the college means it could be the um, industry options that you get it off campus. So majority of the international majority of the international students choose USA as a destination to pursue their higher studies and primarily because it is known to be the land of opportunities. So let me just throw some light on it to give you a little understanding with regards to what do you mean by land of opportunity for US is. First being is the Fortune 500 companies in the world. Uh, the Fortune 500 survey includes companies that are incorporated and operated in the United States. In 2023, the Fortune 500 companies cumulatively included about 18.1 trillion in revenue and consisted of at least 30.4 million employees and USA is definitely known to be the home for it. Coming to the commitment to excellence, the United States is renowned for its world-class higher education institutions and it is the home to some of the most prestigious universities globally. Uh, these institutions consistently demonstrate academic excellence research innovation, and a commitment to fostering intellectual growth. Next, we have the academic flexibility. So universities in the US understand that it can be challenging for students to commit to one field of study right away. And that is why they offer flexible curriculums that allow students to tailor their coursework, catering to their interests, catering to their goals and schedules. Let me cite an example in that, in that area for you. Um, if a student wants to study computer science as well as biology, they are very well, they can go ahead with it and do so. And if a student wants to study a major in data science and a minor in music, that is also very acceptable. So that is what I mean with the flexibility of choosing your academics in the US. Coming to the research opportunities, uh, USA is a home to almost 4,000 institutions and majority of the universities offer ample research opportunities in almost all majority of the universities. So US is a home, as I said, it's a home to 4,000 universities and every university does have their own understanding of providing the, of the research opportunities to every student in various course domains. Next up we have is the funding support. So every year, the US spends about 120 billion on funding education across the US universities. So in 2022 to 23, the average financial aid offered across the US universities was recorded at US dollar 77,000. Whereas the highest financial aid offered to the international students among these was US dollars 78,300. And that's almost, that's a huge number to, be, to believe in. So coming to the job opportunities, um, the USA is one of the most popular choices for students um, that are studying abroad across the world, and it has been observed that STEM programs, which stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics, that is STEM programs, attract more international students due to high return of investment and their longer stay of period in the US on the F1 student visa. And the country offers enormous job opportunities, which is definitely true because the jobs are immense but a student should also understand they, that they should have the required skill set and zeal for the hard work. Coming up next is the campus life experience. So what exactly the campus life looks like in the US? You know, so college life in US can vary widely um, depending on the specific institution and individual experience, but there are some common elements such as offering a diverse range of academic programs, extracurricular activities, and social events. Students often have the opportunity to live on campus 
as well as off campus, which can be ideally nearby the campus. And this helps them forming a close knit community and participating in campus traditions. Overall, the college life in US can be a time of growth. It can be a time of learning and exploration for many students. Lastly, we have the cultural enhancement and valuation, value addition. Uh, the USA is often tutored as a melting pot of several cultures, which attracts students from all over the world. In the US, they believe in freedom and individuality and respect different views and cultures. So when you study or you're planning to study in, a, in the US, uh, your ideas, your thoughts, your perspectives, all are being heard by the university. And this definitely overall adds a lot of value for the international students. So if you have the option of choosing, you know, when we say that US is a land of opportunity, then yes, these are the major factors what makes you choose or understand it, why you should be use, you should be opting for US as your career option. Well, in this slide, you can see the flexibility of the courses. So generally in the universities, you are allowed to take, and every student is allowed to take courses, co-courses, and uh, with co-courses, I mean, it is the mandatory courses that you are allowed to choose. And apart from the mandatory courses, you're also allowed to choose electives, tracks, um, specializations, concentrations, etc. This is what it is ideally called in the US. And but over here in this slide, you can also see that a particular course for example, like computer science, that's the particular course you are moving out for. And you realize that under that course, you can also study technical courses, non-technical courses, as well as the technical management courses. So to, to make it um, easier for you all, I have catered the entire courses in three different sectors. For example, if you see here, if a student wants to study computer science at any level, could be a bachelor's level or a master's level, um, when you take a major program, which is computer science, the technical course, for example, could be algorithms on, and data structures. And if you're moving with a non-technical course under computer science to study, you, are, you, you can see that you have um, engineering composites courses or English composition course, courses. And if you are looking forward to see um, the, the courses which related to the technical management courses, then you can do project management. So basically, this gives you an overview that while studying in US, you have the leverage and flexibility to choose a number of courses depending on the choice of what you are looking out for. It could be computer science, it could be engineering, it could be IT, it could be data science, civil, public health, environmental science, um, even food science, um, health informatics, could be anything. So you have the leverage to choose your career in the right way. And these um, courses will also lead to different sectors or domains in terms of your job as well. Uh, moving on to the next one, um, it's about the market and the opportunities. So before getting into this, let me explain what do you understand by hub or what is an innovation hub? So basically, innovation hub is notified as a physical space you know, that brings together uh, creators, investors, researchers, basically what? To nurture ideas, to industry changing products and services. So for example, um, if you um, if you have probably since I'm living in, since this is from Bangalore, so let me give you relative examples on that. Um, with regards to career go growth, Bangalore is known as the IT hub. Why? Because it has all the major IT companies in the state and is a leading spectrum of tech based companies. Likewise, Mumbai is known as the financial hub because of the significant contribution to the nation's economy. Similarly, 
Even Hyderabad is known for a combination of hubs. For example, it is known for its pharmaceutical, it's known for its um, even biotechnology and even IT domain. So, for example, Delhi. Now, Delhi is also known as the economic hub. And why? B because it's an important place for business and also for trading. So, th this, is, this is how a hub is recognized as. Similarly, even in the US, if you are uh, looking forward to understand what kind of ROI you are expecting, you should be able to understand what is an innovation hub. For example, for example, if you see here in my slide, you will be able to um, notify and see that, for example, the hub as California, which is the main hub that we see. And here you can see what are the top courses that is sellable or that is most um, likely to be taken from students. So you can see computer science, you can see artificial intelligence, data science. Like These are some of the top courses for California, which is known to be the Silicon Valley. And uh, the notable companies, for example, you have Facebook, uh, you have Microsoft, Tesla, Intel, Apple, Google. So it varies from you know, in a hub to hub. Similarly, you also have New York City. New York City is known for finance, film production, even computer science as well. So you have Pfizer, IBM, um, JP Morgan Chase, all these as the notable companies. Similarly, students looking forward for bio courses for biomedical engineering, business, would also look for North Carolina or these states and understand what kind of um, you know, notable companies are being placed over there. Um, you also have, I've also given one more slide where you can see probably in Colorado, you have Denver, you have Boulder, which is located in Colorado and it's known for aerospace engineering or renewable energy business. So you also have the, not the notable companies. So this is just an overview for you all to understand that every state in the US covers a hub, of course, as well as you can also shortlist or understand or select the type of courses that you're looking out for and see around what kind of notable companies is also a present over there, which will be helpful for you in terms of choosing jobs and internships, specifically in the US. So now, um, Let's talk about some of the average salaries as mentioned on the screen for both bachelors as well as masters. And um, this will definitely give you an idea with regards to the profession as to what are you looking out for. And the average salary in the USA per month or year varies widely across industries. It can be through jobs, age, experience, education, and at some point, even with the geographical locations. So in general, if you see um, wages in the United States tend to be higher than those in Europe or any other countries. And particularly, this is also because of skilled and high paying jobs. And part of the re reason for this is also because the cost of living in US is usually higher than any other countries, even though Sectors like California, Illinois, or New York, Massachusetts, these are little relatively more expensive than any than any other states in the US. But overall, if you see the cost of living uh, in comparison with other countries, uh, you for US, the cost of living is usually high. So that's that's also a reason reason that why we see that the average salaries also vary uh, depending on you know, the location as well as what kind of industry you are getting your job in hand for. So profession-wise, there could be many professions. I've just noted and highlighted some of them here. So for example, you have um, software developer, or nurse, accountancy, marketing coordinator, mechanical engineer, data analyst, financial analyst, physician, IT manager, graphic designer. So basically in all all sorts of courses that you're looking out for, every student makes sure and you will be given that sort of average salary when you are moving into 
in US in whichever profession you are looking out for. Um, moving on to this slide is the percentage of the international students in the US. Um, it is the hub for students from all over the world, and we all are we all know about it. So the US remains generally the top choice for students seeking higher education abroad. And the country hosted the the US as a country has hosted more than million international college students during the 2022 and 2023 academic year, which was relatively the most highest. And this is according to the uh, data of the latest open doors that is reported on the International Educational Exchange. So the numbers marks an almost 12% jump from the previous year. And it is considered to be the fastest growth rate in more than 40 years. And I believe it will be continuing. And the surge is also seen for this intake as well. So students from around the world are continuing to recognize the U.S. global leadership in higher education. And it can be very well seen on the screen that the percentage of Asians is highest among all. And when I say Asians, now where do we fall? Basically, Indian students, we all fall under the Asian category as per the U.S. understanding. And when we when we are uh, dealing with applications, applying to the universities, we'll majorly find Asians where we fall. So Indians fall under the category of Asians. And relatively, if you see here, um, Asians, the amount of the percentage, it, it varies. It's 73% almost. And the rest of the countries, if you see, Europe comes to 9%, Middle East and North Africa is in 5%. The Sub-Saharan African region is for 4%. Uh, Latin American and Caribbean is 3%. North America and Australia and New Zealand falls into the 2% category, whereas Central Asia and other regions fall under 1%, the, which also means that uh, the competition is quite high for international students and specifically for students that fall under the Asian category. So this slide, we will be notifying with regards to the cost, which is very essential. And um, there are many websites which talks about what is the cost that will be average um, you know, for any a state or public university as well as a private university. So I have just bifurcated it for an understanding. If you look, if you're planning to go for your undergraduate studies, um, majorly in undergraduate, the public or the state in institutions per year average in US dollars, the range is given. It costs about $20 to $45 for $20,000 $20, to $45,000 uh, per year. And definitely it can vary from program to program as well from university to university and also depends on what sort of location it is placed. So $20,000 would roughly mean approximately 15 lakhs per year, and it can go even up to 33 lakhs, 75,000 per year. So it varies. Um, likewise, even for private institutions, if you see um, it's $40,000 to $70,000 per year, um, which is again in USD, but if you look into the um, INR section, then it would be 30 lakhs to even 52 lakhs, 50,000 per year. So Coming, moving on, that, that is basically for bachelors. If you are looking out for postgraduate, the public institutions uh, will vary again from $20,000 to $60,000. So yes, uh, varying from what sort of course, again, so at times MBA could be even more expensive in a private university rather than a public university. But at the same university, um, probably an IT course could be on a lesser, uh, pri uh, lesser cost. So it will definitely vary depending on what, again, the program and the university and at times also the location. Okay. Here I have um, 
I would actually like to brief up and briefly highlight the section, which is very important. I, I also believe that we are all aware of it, but um, to understand the components, it's very, uh, it's very important to have a throw or highlight on that. So these are the requirements for both batch bachelors as well as masters. And this will help you um, to ideally give you an overview as to what documents are needed to be kept in mind when you're applying for US. So if you see uh, that for a bachelor's degree, the requirements include the form, which is called the application form. Majorly for undergraduate, we use Common App application, um, or else we also have the university websites that can be um, utilized for your application process. Uh, moving on to the application fee, it, it does require an application fee and it can vary from university to university and the minimum can start from $35,000 and can go up to even $150 being the end of it. And high school transcript, when we say for bachelors, do you require high school transcript means generally universities ask for 10th, 11th, 10th, and 10th and 11th standard marks cards. And if you are still pursuing your 12th, so then uh, you know a predicted score might be required or if you're completed, then 10th, 11th, 12th will be required. At some cases, universities also come back asking for the ninth standard high school transcripts, which is also important for them. So if it is being asked, you will have to provide them accordingly. Um, moving on to the letter of recommendations, typically for undergraduate studies or bachelor studies, one to three letters is fine, which is required from your school counselors or the teachers. Um, standardized test score, which means um, to get into the universe, to get into university for an undergraduate study, um, majorly in US, undergraduate studies are given more emphasis towards scholarships. And if you have the SAT or ACT scores, which is ideally the scholastic aptitude test, these will help a student to gather more scholarship. But it's been after the pandemic scenario, a majority of the universities have made it as a test optional or waive the requirements for SAT or ACT. However, some universities still accept. Um, understanding the personal statement or essay. So basically for an undergraduate student, essays are very important. And every application has a statement where it talks about or describes about what is the understanding of, of a student going ahead with that particular course and also including to describe your goals, your interests, as on what made you pursue this course or the program. Resume or CV is basically for an undergraduate student, you do not have any work experience. So you have to have a detailed resume with regards to your extracurricular activities as well, which creates, which actually holds a lot of importance in the US study for in terms of applying for undergraduate. Uh, moving on to the English proficiency test for international students, you have um, language scores such as the IELTS score or TOEFL scores. Um, nowadays, even um, Duolingo and PT is is also a stand, is also a language score where students are taking. But precisely, um, every university in the US accepts only majorly TOEFL and IELTS, and very few a range of universities accepts PT or Duolingo. And the documentation in terms of proof, in terms of financial proof, yes, it may be required depending on what sort of university you are moving ahead with. Uh, sometimes some university asks you for the financial proof or stability at the time of the application. And some majority of the universities will ask you after you receive an offer or, or a seat from the university. And so these are the components for an undergraduate course uh, in order to apply for the US. If you are looking for a graduate course, which is your master's degree, then um, of course you require an application form and there is nothing called a common app form. Majority of the universities for a master's degree, you need to apply uh, through the website directly. And uh, the application fee, yes, it's required, but it can be waived as well. And that when you have a counseling session with an individual counselor, you will be able to understand that even more with a lot of more clarity. 
uh, high school transcripts. Um, when you are going for a master's course, ideally 10th, 11th or 10th, 12th is not seen for, for the master's level. It's only the undergraduate, which is required majority from all the universities. So basically you should be having your transcript ready, your marks cards, along with your marks cards, you also might require the degree certificate or the provisional. And this would ideally depend on how you are um, or which year are you studying or have you passed out. So that will again vary depending on when are you planning to apply for your course. Letter of recommendations. So in terms of letter of recommendation for masters, um, it is generally from the university where you're studying for your bachelor's or it also can be if you're a working professional, then of course it can be clubbed with a working with a work LOR as well. And um, if some students are studying and they only have internships and no work experience, um, that is even fine. Nothing to worry on that. You can also very well uh, process with your one internship letter. Uh, one may be the um, or two maybe from the university. So you can actually bifurcate depending on what course or, or depending on uh, what is your profile all about. And according to that, it can be processed. Moving on to the standardized test course for US uh, for the masters is basically it will vary from program to program. And you generally test course in the US means the GRE score or the GMAT score. And um, an MBA, if you're looking forward to do an MBA, majorly all the universities in the US ask for a GMAT score. But if you are planning to do business analytics or accountancy, or you want to do finance, um, supply chain, then a GRE as well as a GMAT, both can be acceptable. Or you can give either of the one as well. But if you are going ahead with an IT course, software engineering, data science, mechanical engineering, um, civil engineering, or anything related to HCI, AI, so anything in with regards to the techno-based courses, then GMAT is not accepted and it will be GRE required. Moving on to the personal statement or essay for US and for the masters to be applied for it, statement of purpose or essays holds a very, very important um, overview. And this will be, um, I wouldn't say it's a, changing decision from for the university, but yes, it holds almost 40% weightage is only given to the statement of purpose for applying for masters, ideally. And resume, your resume definitely should be updated and detailed. And again, the proficiency test would, which I mean would be the TOEFLs and the IELTS, which is rightly and acceptable anywhere in the US to whichever university, but the Duolingo and PTE scores will again vary depending from university to university. And financial proof, generally the US universities, majority of the chunk generally ask for a proof of financial documentations right after you get an um, offer or a seat. And if you have it early, uh, you can very well place that in the application too. So ideally, um, this is the overview to have in order to understand to apply to the US process. Well, almost, um, you know, coming to the end of the um, webinar today, I would like to highlight the priorities, basically what priorities that a student that, or every student or an applicant needs to set up. And this is very important for your return of investment. So let me have a look into it in order to explain you what Ideally, what, what ideally the importance is uh, to understand how to select an ideal university, it could lead to the highest ROI, you know, and that would ideally depend on what sort of industry you are planning for. In the previous slides, I did talk about the hub where you have the top courses that you can look out for, and then you have the notable companies. So basically, what you need to choose as an individual or a student and as an applicant, um, you have to understand that what is your career aligned towards to? Which industry are you looking forward for it? 
so so to select to select an ideal university you should first know the industry what is there because your career will be implanted on the basis of this and your career will lead to lead to your you know the the figures the figures which is very good looks for the r which is ideally that is what we are looking out for to be honest we we plan to study to have a better um roi to have a better lifestyle and i think you every student should understand that the importance of industry and what can that be helpful for so after you have identified the industry then start the research on what sort of companies are located in that particular desired industry so there are various platforms where you can search for companies um but it is also very important to understand that the research should be definitely done well now you know when i say this there are many websites which will give you an updated version of you know uh, what kind of companies are placed but the research it's at the it's at the end it depends on you as an individual to understand that what companies and the, that's why the research from your side is also very important you will have counselors at any level at any point of them to help you out with but the research that you will be taking in will really hold a lot of um a lot of lot of weightage because at the end it's you who knows that what kind of company you are planning out for if you are planning to do your masters or your bachelors in the us you know so after having an understanding of the companies then you should try to gauge on the location where these companies are are situated so location may not always be the factor but location plays a very significant role when analyzing on the return of investment so basically um it's all interlinked you look into the industry you search for the companies those companies where is it situated where is the location there according to that you know you can decide on which spectrum or how what kind of universities you should be choosing it so moving on to the next step is to search for a good college or university so not necessary that all the expensive universities can lead to a good roi it can vary from university to university it so but by choosing the right college that will help you and it will make your hunt a little bit more easier so you need to research the university or the college well it may not be uh, it may not be correct if i say that only top ranked university gives you the you know the top rank college the university gives you the top roi it it doesn't have to be the university doesn't have to be as expensive for it but yes you need to know what kind of university you are fetching out for and what is the college that is giving out your particular program the industry standouts that is very important so getting a degree doesn't guarantee that you will land a job that utilizes your education or even pays enough to cover your your loan because majority of the student goes ahead with student loans and that is why it is very important to pick a college that can lead to a very good roi so one has to really give a lot of time concerning the search of the college or the university next we have the availability of the courses it is indeed very important to choose the right course that you are interested in because it's you at the end who will be studying the course and most importantly you must like the course you must have an understanding of the course in order to flourish during your study at the us so a basically a course shouldn't be decided you know on anyone's pressures or likeness it should be an individual's choice to choose the course and notify the career cost and that will also help you to notify the career prospects of that particular courses and lastly it is all about the cost so you know a, a thorough breakdown of tuition cost for all the courses may as i said it it is found in many many uh, websites 
and most accurate. And if you really need to understand what is the accurate understanding, please go to the university website. That gives you the correct understanding with regards to the, and for US, cost does not depend on the duration of your uh, program. Cost depends on the credits of the program. You know, for an undergraduate student, the credits can be from, uh, the credits are ideally the 120, 120 credits. And for masters, it is ideally 30 credits. So 30 to 34, 35, we're depending on, again, the course and the university. So, you know, as an individual, you will be the ideal judge to understand the amount of cost that you are able to, or you are willing to invest for your, you know, study plans. So that is, so this is very important. I, when I, I generally, when I deal with students in the office, I see that students come to me uh, for counseling where they say that um, um, I'm, I'm looking for this, I'm looking for this course and I'm looking for a university which can lead me to the cost of this, of maybe relatively of, this is the amount. That's the first thing which comes to the mind. US, costly. It, it doesn't depend. It, it's actually, that's the, that's not the correct scenario. Why? Because you first have to understand why are you planning out for US? Or why, um, of course, US will give you the best ROI. But are you willing to spend your time to under, in understanding not just cost and courses, but not just colleges, you are not going to the university because your friend is there. You're not going to the university because um, uh, this person has told. Look for yourself, understand, take insights from experts, from people to understand that what all these factors, basically the industry, the company, the location, the college, the courses, the cost, everything is interlinked and it plays a very, very important role in choosing a university which ideally and at the end leads to the the return of investment which is what you're looking out for and to be fair um to a to a large extent roi also depends on you definitely it is your choice so you need to understand to set your priorities to make the best use of the opportunities that are coming your way your return of investment then will be more logical it, it'll it'll have a logical choice you know since since what you're trying to accomplish by getting a placement for the job setting. And this will definitely benefit your short term as well as your long term plans, which is also very important to understand that what is your after masters, what is your short term plan? After five years or six years down the line, where do you see yourself in the long term? This is how you need to streamline choosing a university. Okay. And you that is how will help you in making enough money to be worth your time in the university or the college and with this um i come to the end of the webinar and i hope that i was able to deliver the important sites to understand basically that what sort of university what sort of components you need to choose um to be able to move ahead with the highest return of investment and um thank you for your time thank you for visions for listening to me and um, I am now open for the questions and queries and doubts. And I believe I do see certain queries and threats. I will take up those questions. Um, is the question number one, which comes up to it is that, is there any opportunities for project management and dedicated master's program in the US? After all, Google has project managers as posted on it. Rightly said, Ms. Rojwal, um, there are definitely many opportunities for project management and um, likely I've seen students also ask for product management. So it's somewhat similar in terms of project management and product management. And um, you will have uh, courses on that. So you can do, you may have, or you might want to do a flexibility of understanding in terms of a technical course or a uh, basically a non-technical course as well as a management course where uh, you have done probably five, six years or seven, eight years of work experience and now you want to lead to you know a management field. So you will have to understand some courses 
for project management. So US does not have project management as a master's course, but of course you would find these in relative for uh, technological management courses or engineering management courses. So your courses and program will be incorporated with different co the different programs. So that is how uh, you'll be able to you know, check your courses. So that's why curriculum is also super important for you to understand what are you looking out for. So master's in project management, relatively not many universities would have in the US, but you have that as a, a curriculum base, as an elective base or a concentration base for courses, as I have mentioned, for techno-managerial courses, or you have at times even even uh, business courses can also give you a corporate incorporation for the project management. So it it will vary depending on the course understanding, and um, project managers can the salaries for project managers can ideally you can expect. Also, it will depend on what kind of uh, jobs or professions you have been doing previously. If you need an average understanding, it can even start from $60,000 and it can go beyond because the limit, there's nothing called minimum this much to maximum this much. It will also depend on your experience in terms of your work experience. Are we talking about universities for masters in psychology? Um, this is this program is related. I mean, this webinar is relatively with regards to not courses, but choosing the courses in terms of ROI, which is well said and well asked because masters in psychology, you probably you might see that India may not have a huge domain of them, but US is a huge market of psychology and its sub branches. So there are students going for mental counseling. There are students going for sports psychology clinical psychology, um, you have behavioral psychology. So there are a huge number of courses and it is in US, it is acceptable for these courses. The huge ROI is there for schools, for universities, even for hospitals, for community organizations, for community colleges. So of course, we um, when we talk about US, it is a myth that we always think about IT or the under, or the you know, technical based courses, but ideally health informatics, medical informatics, psychology, as you said, sociology, social work, they also have a great, great scope in the US in terms of your ROI as well. And we are always happy to, you know, we have, please walk into a nearby offices because visit the ACC office. We have the designated counselors who will be happy, who will be um, happy and, you know, will be really inclined to guide for every course and what kind of um, set, uh, what kind of courses and what kind of understanding towards that course, what will that course lead you to? So we definitely cover everything with regards to these. It says three-year graduation are eligible for master's course STEM, as I have done BSc in IT, looking for master's in CS. Yes, um, good question again, because I believe most of you have heard that US of US is mostly accepting 16 years of education, which is 10 plus 2 plus 4. And probably relatively the margin for 15 years of education, that is 10 plus 2 plus 3, that is your undergraduate degrees for three years. Um, are you eligible for the STEM course? Yes, of course. Your 15, three year or four year under your three year or your four year of the study does not emphasize whether your course will be that the course that you are looking for in masters will be stem or non stem it will vary depending on the university whether in the us they are accepting 15 years or not 16 years for example you are rightly eligible to apply for masters in computer science even though you have a bachelor of science in it which is a three year course you are eligible to do your masters in cs which is a stem degree course so CS will anyways be a STEM degree course, irrespective of the fact whether you come from a three-year degree or you come from a four-year degree. That has nothing to do with the um, eligibility criteria. Your criteria will depend on whether that particular university is accepting 15 years or 16 years. So in that scenario, prior to that, as I said, you can walk into our office or you have the right to email the admissions team of the university 
with regards to your profile and they will let you know whether three-year education, three-year undergraduate degree is acceptable or not acceptable. I'm interested in doing it from any public university for keeping the cost limited. So this is, I believe, with regards to the project management course. Yes, of course. So as I said, it will vary. Um, you can definitely do it from a public university, um, public and state, but also, for example, if you look into California, so if you are think, I'm just relatively giving an example that public university in California, the state universities will um, enhance your, um, the, the costing will start from ideally the state universities not all the all the all the states of state university but if you look majorly for uh, california then you have universities such as san jose san francisco or california state university dominic hills channel islands um, east bay long beach these universities relatively have one year tuition fees starting from 12 lakhs to 16 lakhs so if you are looking out even for a masters for your for your course in terms of a 1.5 so it will be in the budget, of course, plus it will give you a good ROI as well. You So you're basically doing it in a win-win situation, which means you have your um, degree, I mean, you have your costing also in budget and you have a good degree as well as you have an importance in terms of your, the universe as well as the location. So it will help you in all the factors. So you are, if you're interested, to do your public, I mean, to do it from any public university, which is very, very well accepted. You need not have to worry. It will be cost limited, yet it will help you to understand which university you are going ahead with. Does MBA finance comes under STEM degree? Um, generally, master's in business administration always falls as a earlier. It used to be always MBA was always a non-STEM degree, but it's it's been about five to six years that certain universities, a chunk of universities in the U.S., for relatively about 27 to 28 universities you will find in the U.S. that offers MBA also as a STEM degree. So now if MBA, you are planning to do MBA in finance, again, some university, for example, particular university, A university, you have MBA in finance, you have MS finance, you have MS quantitative finance, and you have MS in financial analytics. So now the MBA finance, whether it is STEM degree or not, will initially depend on the course curriculum of the university, which means that probably in that particular university, financial analytics or quantitative finance is a STEM degree. But MBA finance as, uh, or MS finance may not be a STEM degree. So again, it will vary from the curriculum based of the university. So ideally, finance has come, MS Finance, Masters of Science in Finance, has relatively moved towards a STEM sector because the return of investment and the funding is quite high in the US. But MBA Finance, again, it will vary depending on the curriculum of the university. So yes, some, not all degrees will be, not all MBA finance will be STEM, but some of the universities can offer you a STEM degree. Um, GMAT, GRE, what is the requirement for ITCS engineering intent to do MBA? So if you are looking to do MBA, first of all, apart from the GRE or the GMAT requirement, you also need to have for MBA specifically in US, you need work experience. And the top-notch universities require work experience for at least a minimum of three years and above. So for MBA, apart from the GMAT perspective, so nowadays, uh, even for the last intake, I have seen that not all MBA universities are asking for GMAT or GRE. Um, if you see the notable universities like Jin School of Management or Darden School of Engineering or Darden School of Management, or you are looking for... Um, a Mendoza School of Business, or you are looking for um, WB Carey School of Business, a certain school of businesses of these universities will ask mandatorily your the work experience, but the GMAT or the GRE requirement 
can be waived off. So some universities would also tell you that you are if you're going for an MBA, um, if you have more than eight years of work experience, we can waive your GMAT score. So again, that will vary from university to university. So ideally, I have seen students, my students getting um, MBA, you know, they, they have got 100% scholarship for MBA and the student had a nine years of experience. So it will vary depending on your overall resume as well as what sort of work experience have you hold or have you held in terms of while you were do while you were um, you know during your work professional. So that will also matter. Does AACC provide classes for GRE? Yes, we do. We do classes for GRE. We have classes for IELTS. We have classes for TOEFL. So we also provide. Um, demo classes for IELTS and as well as for GRE. And uh, please feel free to reach out to the nearby office for yours and you will get the details from the counselors and the respective um, the, the individuals from the office. They will help you to understand what classes do we have and what timings could it. We have weekday classes, we have weekend classes. Um, the timings can be morning, it can be afternoon, it can be evening. So it will vary from um the the class size as well so of course we have and um, please feel free to reach to our office and we'll be happy to give you more insights on that are there any masters in cybersecurity courses available in us oh yes very much so masters in cybersecurity relatively um it's a component under cs as well so if you want if a student is headbound towards doing masters in cybersecurity of course, you will have it. If you want to have a broad understanding of computer science and then you want to take up, for example, cybersecurity as well as well as HCI. Now, you can even combine that. So your course will be Masters of Science in Computer Science and your um, specialization could be cybersecurity and HCI. So yes, you are available. You, there are eligible. You are 100% um, eligible and you will be able to do your master's in cybersecurity as well and also for your MS in computer science with cybersecurity too. So what is the average cost for public university in California? So as I said, if you have, if you are looking out for the spectrum where the word state falls in, for example, San Jose State, San Diego State, San Francisco State, you have um, Cal State Northridge, Cal State Fresno, Cal State Long Beach, um, all these course, all these universities will have one year average cost will be from 12 lakhs to 16 lakhs. It can also be from 12 lakhs to 18 lakhs. If you're looking for universities such as UC Irvine, UC Davis, you are looking for um, um, University of San Francisco, you're looking for UC Riverside, uh, you're looking for Santa Cruz, then all these spots of universities, uh, one year can range from even... 25, um, 25, 20, 22 lakhs, yeah, 22 lakhs, and it can go up to even 28 lakhs or 30 lakhs. And uh, if you are looking for pub, the private ones like Southern California, Caltech and all, then it will, per year, it can cost above, it will be above like 20, 25 lakhs, 28 lakhs and beyond. It can go even up to 37, 38 lakhs. That is average yearly. Also, is GRE still accepted? As a lot of universities in 2024 waived off GRE scores for the fall 2024 admission. Uh, rightly said, yes, um, GRD uh, is being waived off by majority of the university's times, but it will also vary from course to course. Uh, initially, for business analytics uh, on computer science, um, it always asked for GRE, but relatively from the fall 2023 and 2024 admissions, um, you're rightly saying that, yes, majority of the universities are waving it off. So there are three spectrums to understand GRE. Uh, some universities will ask for the GRE, man, GRE as mandatory. Some universities ask for GRE as optional. And some universities ask for GRE as waived. In this scenario, if you mandatory would mean that definitely it is mandatory. So it will depend from the university, depend on the university as well as the course. However, if they say optional, that means you are. That's up to you whether you want to um, put up your scores or not. So some universities will have your GRE optional. 
even if you if you have this course we will consider if you don't have this course we don't consider so it will vary and if you say gre waived then it means that even if you write your gre scores some university will tell you that we will not be considering it so there are three different understandings so one is gre mandatory gre waived and gre um optional so while choosing the university you will get to know whether which university which course is falling under for you whether it is on the waived or optional or mandatory section um should an BIT third year student with 6.75 CGP and 11 backlogs should even think of doing MS in computer science in US? Okay. If yes, then at what scale from zero to hundred percent the particular student has chances to get accepted in US? In if no, then what is the solution? Very well put up with this question. Um, backlogs, first of all, um, in US it varies. Now, to be honest, and I have seen, again, I've seen students coming in, um, not completing their bachelor's in three, four years, but taking an extra year. So in this scenario, um, I have also seen computer science relatively becomes little difficult probably, but it's not like student universities will not accept. I have seen students accepting and I've seen students even with a 59% with passing out in five years, getting a $10,000 scholarship from Stevens Institute of Technology. So it will vary. So your components, it's not just GPA. So your components of, again, what else GPA you cannot change or it because that's stagnant. What else could you have to elevate or enhance your profile? So in this scenario, the MS in computer science you would want to do in the US, you definitely, you will be able to do it may not be in the first spectrum of 1 to 80 or 1 to 100. But of course, you will have the timeline to understand. And in such scenarios, if you are uh, flexible enough to choose IT, so pro probably because computer science being the most most um, competitive course in the US, so it could be the, the understanding of the uh, getting into the university may be a little less in this scenario. However, I would suggest then you can also pick and choose your understanding towards IT or software engineering. That becomes relatively little less competitive in terms of getting in uh, if you're planning out for computer science. You can think from that point of view as well. So solution would be that your overall um, other holistic profile should also be kind of, um, you know, you, you should be able to move ahead with the scenario. So I would say that, yes, please see what kind of, um, you know, course will also be adjusted towards computer science, like IT software and all this thing will help you. Um, that's that's one thing. But there is no saying that you will not be able to get into. You do have definitely chances to get into. Um, So uh, please, I would suggest you all to share your, um, we, we do run out a little late for the webinar because uh, it's a one hour thing. However, please share your contact details in the chat box and we will definitely reach out for you for your personalized sessions with counselors with one-on-one, -on -one, which will help you to understand your profile more better with them. So feel free to um, please put up your details in the chat box and uh, I'm aiming, I'll pick up the last two questions from here that biotechnology courses and masters. So I want a biotechnology sector in the USA. Yeah, I mean, since you are, you have a background of biotechnology, then definitely you will be eligible to move ahead with the course, not an issue. Okay. Uh, what is the STEM course and what are its advantages in UK? I, I, I'm sorry, this is probably totally a US webinar. So for the highlights of UK, you'll have to stay tuned with us. We will help you with that. But what is a STEM course? STEM course means when your course falls under science, technology, engineering, and mathematics domain. So basically computer science, um, you have IT sector courses, but relatively nowadays, uh, even health informatics and all these are STEM courses. And STEM courses means that you are eligible to, uh, to stay in the U, to work in the US for another 24 months extra apart from the 12 months. 
So basically, you get 36 months of work permit, which is three years. So that's called the advantages of STEM course. Okay. Um, I believe there are many questions that I have to put up, and I'm not sure we'll be able to cover all of those as of now. But of course, um, please feel free to connect us, you know, and... Um, no, before I would before I end this session, you know, I I would really thank you for the wonderful questions that are being offering because these questions really help others also to understand, you know, the difference or the uh, or or whatever you're planning out for your upcoming careers. And um, so, really, there are a huge number of questions coming in. So we'll be happy to take all this again. Not an issue in terms of those. And for data science courses, GRE required, it will vary from university to university. And we will see, um, depending on what uh, so suppose data science course, some universities may require, some universities may not require. So it will again vary. So that is something the you know, when you are if when you are shortlisting your universities, you'll be able to see what is going ahead with it. And um Can we get admissions in US universities even if we don't have extracurricular activities and even don't we have Olympiad ranks? If this is with reference to master's question, um, the extracurricular activities in master's does not hold the does not hold more weightage. Um, but if you're looking for bachelor's, extracurricular just does not mean you need to be highly qualified. It can be even an NGO sector work. It can be it can be good in sports. It can be music. It can be it is the overall understanding. You could be a debater. You could be a very good, um, uh, you know, a, probably you're doing well in the uh, profitable organizations. It could be anything. So, of course, you can get universities in the U.S. It doesn't have to do anything with related to these will help you to enhance your profile. So that's um so that's what we have for today and um uh, thank you everyone thank you for your time and we hope to see you all in the next webinar please stay tuned and please please visit or walk to your nearest acc office to plan for your studies and um as we always say hashtag ace with ace abroad with acc thank you